Um, so yeah, this is Tex-Mex and Malik 3C, uh, the problems that restaurant hosts and memory allocators share. Um, my name is Jordan. I'm a software engineer. Uh, I have a lot of interest in system software in particular, uh, so like operating systems, distributed systems. But my very first job was actually working as a restaurant hostess um, in a Tex-Mex restaurant, surprise. And uh, this job taught me a lot, and I got really good at seating people from a wait to tables as people left. Um, and I think about this problem all the time because it's actually kind of hard. We didn't take reservations uh, and this restaurant was extremely busy. So we would have like between up to like 40 people waiting, 40 parties, so like 120 people waiting for a table in a restaurant that only had like 35 tables. Um, and large parties do not fit everywhere in the restaurant. And on top of this, the, the place I worked at was very customer service oriented. So we would not turn down a party regardless of size. You didn't have to call ahead. like make our lives miserable, basically. <laughs> um, and the way that we would make tables for larger parties is by pushing smaller tables together. Um, and you might be able to see kind of where this is going if you're familiar with memory allocation. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we also don't know how long people are gonna stay. We can come up with some metrics to predict it. Um, but as a host, which is what my job was, I had to interface with customers, managers, servers, all these people um, who kind of had different views of the world, as you might see. So what does this have to do with Malloc? So if you, memory allocators, if you're unfamiliar, uh, take a region of memory and they split it up into pieces and uh, give it to programs requesting some size. So you might request like 10 bytes, but you get like a, I don't know, like a 16 byte chunk. So it's not necessarily what you ask for, but that's how it works internally. Um, and you can also do things like combine free memory regions back together so that you have larger pieces to give out later. And this is pretty similar to the problem of like taking small tables, pushing them together, separating them, and so on. So this was the literal restaurant layout. This is like how much I remember this, even though it was more than 10 years ago. Uh, it doesn't look like this anymore. I've been back. So the smaller table, the smaller ones are what we call two tops, which means they have two seats. Uh, and the larger ones are four tops, so four seats. And everything in this restaurant um, is small, as you can see. And then we can fit big parties in these sections. So like maybe table 10 and 38 can seat six to nine people. Um, this section down here was for those like people that would come in with their whole soccer team. Uh, so the way that we would operate when the restaurant was full is like say maybe like tables eight and 36 sat down at the same time. We know that they're probably gonna get up around the same time um, and we can kind of observe that too by whether they paid, et cetera. And so if table 36 gets up and we have a party of six coming up, we might hold table 36 so we can take eight and 36 and push them together. So that's kind of like the idea of how this would work. And then this is a wait list, just an example, like names, sizes, time spent waiting, so on. So the rules, the rules, no one knows that reference. That makes me seem really, maybe I seem young, I don't know. Uh, so we seat parties in order of the wait. It's a queue, generally. But people typically understand if they're a larger party, uh, like smaller parties can go ahead of them because they might be able to fit in different places. But in practice, we would actually announce the party's table being ready over a loudspeaker. So everyone in the waiting area can hear when people are seated ahead of them and will maybe notice. Um, so I had to work with managers a lot. They would watch what we were doing, keep tabs on us, tell us what to do. Uh, and they, this is kind of like the way that they thought about the world simplified. They like to see tables seated if we were on a wait, because that means money. And if they don't, then we're losing money. And also, like, they have this special power where they can give free guacamole to unhappy customers and make them happy, which <laughs> helps. Uh, servers are another per, you know, group of people I had to deal with who are making money by waiting tables. So they also like to have a full section, the tables they're responsible for. But they also like, really like high turnover because that means they're getting multiple parties, more tips throughout the night. And they don't like to be double or triple sat, which means sat with like two or three tables at the same time because there's a lot of work up front when you first get seated, like taking drink orders, saying hello, all those things. Uh, and this means that they really don't like big tops because we have to hold their tables. And also that might mean they're double or triple sat when we separate those tables later in the night. My incentives though, as a host, are a little bit different. So I'm dealing with customers and they liked, I like them to be happy. I like to not have them yell or be upset. And they generally like to see the weight seated in order. Um, but they don't have that full context, so it's hard for them to tell if maybe a bunch of parties of two get sat ahead of them. 
they don't realize that those are only for tables of two and we can't push them together and give them that table or something like that. And I don't have free guacamole, which was a shame. Uh, so now we're getting to the good stuff. Allocation strategies and the properties of the system. So as seated parties leave, we have free tables. How do we allocate those free tables to parties on the wait? And how can we measure that effectiveness? Well, the, one of the properties we might look at is throughput. Uh, so that's the number here, the number of people served per unit of time, maybe like 400 people during dinner. Uh, and this can have direct impact on like sales for the day, which affects manager pay because they're compensated in part for sales and tipped wages for servers who also get wages based on sales. Utilization, another memory thing. Uh, percentage of tables seated at a given time, so like maybe for the average minute during dinner, 95% tables of tables are occupied. Lower utilization can probably mean that we're holding tables for big tops if we're on a wait, uh, and that could have like impact on sales, but also large parties spend more money. They also have to pay like an extra fee because they're a big group, um, so maybe that kind of works out. Uh, the next is time to leave, <laughs> which is uh, how long it takes for a table to, to leave, so expire, whatever. Uh, <laughs> or table turnover, maybe a more reasonable thing to call it. But usually smaller parties leave more quickly. Uh, low TTL is probably higher throughput, at least for that table, and that's going to be higher sales. This is a metric that I, I, I don't know if it's used anywhere else. I kind of just came, came up with it for this talk, but FIFO fidelity, first in, first out uh, fidelity, as in how close are we to seating the weight in order? So like 65% FIFO fidelity might mean that 35% of parties were seated ahead of their spot. Uh, and the impact of this is a little bit more indirect because it's about customer perception. So that might make my job harder and it might worsen how, uh, how much customers come back if they feel like we're unfair or ineffective. Uh, internal fragmentation, the seats used within a single table. So a party of two seated at a table of four is wasting two seats. Um, and this is not necessarily like a bad thing if we only have parties of two. Um, that's probably the most efficient way to use it. But it's usually, it was usually better to minimize this, to so like maybe hold this table for a party of four that's a little further down and seat this table of two at one that's about to get up or something like that. Uh, external fragmentation is the number of tables that we cannot use for big tops because the seating times don't line up well. So if like table nine has paid and they're about to leave, but 37 just sat down, we're probably not gonna use that for a big top because we'd have to hold it until that party like ordered an eight and left. Uh, and so this is, uh, impacts FIFO fidelity because it makes it harder to seat big tops in particular as the number of them when the weight increases and we have fewer options to put them at. So putting this all together, we know the incentives of each group of people and we know the allocation, or we, we can probably guess what the allocation strategy will be. Uh, what will the, how will this impact the system? So managers, they want to optimize for high utilization, so seeing lots of tables uh, seated and high throughput, high sales. And this ends up looking a little bit closer to like a first fit strategy. So as soon as there's a table available for a party waiting, the first one, um, and see tables as soon as they're free. But this can lead to higher fragmentation and lower FIFO fidelity. Uh, servers look pretty similar. They like low TTL, high throughput, high utilization, uh, also closer to a first fit. Um, and one, want their table seated as soon as they're available, avoid double seating and holding tables. Again, higher fragmentation and lower FIFO fidelity. Hosts, on the other hand, are way on the high FIFO fidelity side, at least I was. Um, and this, and for low external fragmentation so that we have those spots for big tops. So we sort of treat them as special. And this ends up looking more like a slab allocation memory strategy. Um, so we hold those tables aggressively, really reserve them for big size parties like nine to 10 or whatever. Uh, and we also double, triple seat to make that happen in the future. So in an hour, they'll all get up, all these three tables will get up at the same time and you can use it for like a 15 top. Uh, and that can lead to lower utilization, maybe lower throughput. It's all really dependent on what the weight looks like. And customers don't get to see people, <laughs> uh, but they, if they might have a preference on one of these depending on their party size. So if you're a big party, you're definitely gonna benefit from slab because you'll probably be seated in about the order that you came in, which is, which is great. Come in with 12 people and get to be sat within an hour, that's great. Uh, but for smaller parties, you're gonna benefit more from a first fit strategy because you will probably jump in the queue since you can fit at many more tables than big parties. Uh, so thank you.
This is a good uh, paper about slab allocation by Jeff Bonwick and a talk by Ryan Zazeski from Papers We Love. I watched it again before this talk to make sure I remember the details, and I work at Fastly, and that's the hiring thing, if you're curious. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.